Luxury penthouse apartments in New York City are trading for tens of millions of dollars less than they were just a few years ago. The guy who created the video game Guitar Hero is auctioning off his California mansion. And New York has come up with a very creative strategy to help solve the housing shortage problem that they're having in the city. Today, let's dive into some of the best real estate headlines that have come up the past couple of weeks. Another penthouse apartment just sold at one of those skyscrapers on Billionaire's Row for 32 million bucks but this was way, way less than the seller was originally asking. Now there have been some pain points with these ultra luxury residences sprinkled around Manhattan for a while now. It has not been uncommon to see these multi-million dollar luxury apartments sell for way less than the sellers even paid for the apartments. That is exactly what happened in this story that the real deal broke about 157's latest transaction. We've talked about 157 here on the channel a bunch of times before. It's a 75 story skyscraper with a big Park Hyatt hotel on the lower levels and then 92 condo units on the upper levels. And the place is situated right along a strip known as Billionaire's Row, which is a group of ultra luxury buildings on the south side of Central Park. So let's just look at some of these deals together. We're looking at basically everything that has recently sold in 157. I think Zillow pulls like the past six months or the past year or something. These apartments have sold anywhere from $4 million all the way up to $40 million. The one we were talking about at the start of the video that just closed is this massive penthouse. It's 6,200 square feet, amazing views. It's up on the 88th floor. It just sold for 31.5 million. But if we scroll down to the price history, see this is what's crazy. So the original owner bought this unit for 47.3 million. Five years later, they took a massive loss. They sold it for 28 million in June of 2020. And then that person who bought it relisted the place for sale two years later for 45 million. And then then after a bunch of price drops, it finally sold for 31, way less than they were originally asking. And then if we go down and look at some of these other random ones here that have recently sold, let's pick this one. So it says sold May of 2023 for 12.8 million. This one's on the 46th floor. And then if we go down and look at the price history on this one, you guys will see, okay, look, so it sold in May, but if we go down and look all the way back, this property was originally listed way back in 2015, basically when the building was finished for almost 20 million bucks. And I don't think this apartment ever sold. The developer themselves had the listing way back in the beginning when it was listed for 20 million. They dropped the price a bunch. They raised the price a bunch. It was most recently listed for 13.9 before it just sold for 12.8. Then scrolling down, let's just pick another one. Like let's look at, I don't know, this one, 13.4 million. It's 3,200 square feet. It sold in February of 23. This one's up on the 53rd floor. Amazing views. Let's go down though and look at the price history here. Okay, so sold for 13.4, but Lots of price reductions and yeah, look at this guys. So September of 2014, this thing sold for $21.9 million. And these people who bought this place, what, almost 10 years ago, just resold it for $13.4 million. So they held on to this apartment for almost 10 years and they lost probably $10 million on the sale after they paid their commissions and everything. That is insane. I mean, you guys get the point. This same trend is happening with tons of apartments and all of these super tall skyscrapers that are scattered around Manhattan. And to be honest, this is all kind of surprising to me. I mean, I've always looked at New York City as a place that wealthy people just park cash because generally investing in apartments like this is a pretty good idea. I guess they're dealing with just a little bit of a supply and demand issue right now. I know it's not gonna last forever, but it is pretty wild to see. Frank Sinatra's former home in Los Angeles just hit the market for $8.99 million. And I know I've said this before, but this is probably one of the coolest houses I've ever seen. It's located at 9361 Farallone Avenue in Chatsworth, California. This home was designed by renowned architect William Paera. And if the house looks familiar, it's probably because it has been used by over 500 production companies over the years for movies, TV shows, and music videos. Okay, so like I said, we're priced at just under $9 million. The home has four bedrooms, seven bathrooms, and it's pretty big for a mid-century modern house. It's 6,600 square feet. It's a 1951 build, and it's sitting on 4.03 acres. So check it out. We're working with basically one big glass box. I'm pretty sure this is the walkway that takes 
you up kind of through the courtyard and up to the front door. Nice swimming pool with this long section here that's all covered for your outdoor seating and dining table and all that stuff. From this room, you have direct access to the pool, great mountain views. I love that white epoxy floor. And then it looks like we've got a seating area and then a little dining nook in the back. I don't know how to play piano, but if I did, I could picture myself hanging out here and playing piano pretty much all day. Here's a nice big dining table that's looking out the windows into that front courtyard. The kitchen's pretty small, but that's not all that surprising for a house like this that was built in the 50s. Here's another living room area, and I have no idea what this flooring is here. It looks like some type of like a cork board or something, but pretty cool. I'm gonna guess this is the primary bedroom with a bed sitting up on this platform here. And I love this perspective of the house because here's that little outdoor seating area that we talked about earlier. The pool is on this side of the wall, but then over on this side of the wall, you got that massive lawn. The listing description says that there's actually an adjacent 10 acre parcel of land that's also available for sale separately here. How cool would it be if a developer came in, bought the Far Alone house, and then bought those 10 acres and built out a little village of mid-century modern houses? Probably just wishful thinking. We'll see what happens. Okay, so next we need to get over to New York City to talk about how they are coming up with a kind of unique proposal to address the housing problem over there. But first, I just wanted to say thank you to my friends over at Estate Media for sponsoring today's episode. I've talked about these guys before, and if you don't know who Estate Media is yet, they're basically a real estate news hub. They've got a bunch of different content creators over there, and they're posting new real estate news on Estate Media's YouTube channel almost every day. So so yeah, thank you Estate Media for sponsoring today's episode. Back to the video. Okay, this is crazy. New York City has announced that they are willing to pay homeowners up to $395,000 to help them build an accessory dwelling unit either in their basement or in their garage to help the whole housing crisis situation in the city. The press release says that they're looking for garage studios, basement apartments, and backyard cottages with the release of a pilot program to help homeowners add new small homes across New York City. This is all aimed to support working and middle-class families who are looking for an extra source of income. And then it's looking to help put more affordable housing units on the market. And this program is very real. It's actually open to applicants right now. The gist of how this will all work is if you live in a property that might have some space to build one of these units, you can apply for this program. If you're approved for the program, the city will give you the money needed to build out the unit on your property and basically get the unit to a place where it's rent ready. Sounds pretty awesome, but as with most programs like this, of course, there's a couple of catches. For one, in order to be eligible, you can't be earning more than $186,450 for a two-person household. For two, you need to be an owner-occupant of the property. For three, your property needs to meet all of the eligible building criteria. And then last, once your project is finished, you're not going to be able to rent that ADU that you just built for more than $2,600 per month. They're only opening it up to to 15 eligible homeowners at this time. So if you meet all of this criteria, if I were you, I would race to get your application in and who knows, maybe you'll get approved. Back over to California and we have an awesome 15 acre estate that just hit the auction block. This place is actually owned by the guy who helped to create the video game Guitar Hero. I'm not sure if Guitar Hero is still even a thing nowadays, but anybody my age remembers this game from back in the mid 2000s, probably one of the best video games of all time. And the engineer, Jack McCauley, who is responsible for the game, has done very well for himself. He went on to co-found a company called Oculus VR, which was acquired by Facebook for $2 billion. This one's actually not even listed on Zillow or on the MLS. It's actually going up for auction at the website that we've talked about a lot here in the past, Concierge Auctions. They're saying it's currently listed for basically $9 million. There's no reserve, and starting bids are expected between $2.8 and $5. 5.5 million. They describe this place to be an expansive vineyard sitting on 14 acres. It's got an open floor plan with a bunch of that indoor outdoor living. And I guess the architect Mark Schatz who designed this property kind of used his inspiration from all of his work that he's done on Four Seasons Resorts. Cover photo actually seriously kind of looks like a stock image or a rendering. This doesn't even look real. From this angle you can see all the vineyards surrounding the property, tons of palm trees all around the pool. It's definitely feeling like a resort but it 
does also kind of look like the biggest house in the area. Obviously, with the guy who is selling this house being the guy who started Guitar Hero, we've got some guitars on the wall, little fireplace and piano here, and here we've got the living room and the kitchen there in the back. The primary bedroom, I think, is upstairs. Huge ensuite bath. It's got a game room and a movie theater. But let's be real, the star of the show with this house is definitely the backyard. Massive pool, huge outdoor kitchen area over here. Got a putting green out there. Not sure what this is, probably shuffleboard, I guess. Huge garage slash man cave. And then, yeah, based on the description, I'm pretty sure that all of these vineyards surrounding the house are also included in the sale. I guess the biggest takeaways from today's episode are that there are some serious bargains to be had on luxury apartments on Billionaire's Row. If you do live in New York City and you've got some extra space on your property, you should probably be applying for that $400,000 grant. And let's face it, some of the best houses in the world came out of the 1950s. No questions asked. I'll see you guys next time.